Good afternoon, Grenada, Karku, and Fiji Martinique, and wherever you're listening, listening to us from across the region. This is update number three for the day, and this one is from Nawasa. We are coming to you live from the National Emergency Operations Center at the headquarters of NADMA. Joining me this afternoon is uh, Mr. Terrence Smith. He's the acting general manager, and Mr. Ernest Bruno, the transmission and distribution manager. We will begin with the acting general manager, Mr. Mr. Terrence Smith, he's going to give you an overview of the preparation work done and the status of water of, of the water systems. Uh, Mr. Smith. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to viewers and listeners. Uh, let me at the outset express our, on behalf of the board, management, and staff of Nawasa, express our profound. Um, uh, well wishes to the, our brothers and sisters in, in Karyoku and Piti Martinique and all persons who have been significantly affected by the passage of Hurricane Beryl. I speak first to, to people to assure the nation all of our staff members with the X are safe and well. However, we do not have any word as yet concerning our staff members in Karyoku and Piti Martinique, and we, we pray that they too are safe and well. Uh, a few members of staff have had some damage to their homes, very few, and uh, one colleague, uh, his, his family has, uh, has lost a family member in Karyoku. This, this we know uh, so far. Uh, so just to, to reiterate that we have had and we currently do not have any communication with uh, Karaku and Piti Martinique. With respect to our, our office facilities, our headquarters on Lucas Street, our Carinard sub-office, both are, are intact and operational. Um, we uh, have not as yet established contact with uh, our, our out parish um, offices in St. Andrew, St. John, and, and St. Patrick, so we're not sure of the, the detailed status. So a little background on Nawasa's preparedness. We activated our hurricane preparedness plan about two weeks ago, ensuring that we were ready for the passage of a tropical storm or, or hurricane. We deployed um, equipment uh, strategically equipment and um, um, repair materials at strategic locations island-wide. In line with our protocol under our uh, hurricane preparedness plan, we decommissioned or shut down in a controlled manner all of our facilities at 9 p.m. on Sunday night Except for Karyaku and Piti Martinique, we have a, a desalination plan, one on each of Karyaku and Piti Martinique. These were shut down at 6 p.m. On, on Sunday Sunday evening. With the exception, however, um, the, the only um, um, public facility that was not decommissioned was the uh, General Hospital, which continued to receive a supply from our storage reservoir at Observatory Waterworks. Following the um, declaration of the, of the All Clear by NADMA at 8 p.m. last night, as early as 5 o'clock this morning, our transmission and distribution and production and quality staff have been in the field um, conducting a damage assessment at our 30-plus uh, facilities. Yeah. We have received feedback from a significant number of these and we expect uh, that the detailed assessments from all of our facilities um, should be received within the next hour. Nawasa has been a, an, an active collaborator with NADMA. We've been represented uh, at, at, on the, the um, NADMA uh, committee. And um, our, one of our engineers, engineer Todd Labari, is currently on his way to Karyoku and Piti Martinique with Nawasa's uh, damage assessment team, or uh, I guess they may be arriving um, pretty soon. Um, while we have no word as yet, as I indicated, 
we anticipate that uh, our, our desal plants and Carioco and Petit Martinique are probably um, negatively impacted by the, um, by the hurricane. So in summary, we are uh, continuing to um, carry out our, our damage assessments. But as we confirm that the plant or water supply system is intact, we will recommission them. My colleague, um, Mr. Ernest Bruno, will speak to some of the details, but uh, probably about 25% of our production capacity is currently back on as we speak. A uh, couple more points. Um, we have uh, received initial offers of assistance from our, our regional uh, our counterparts. And we've indicated to them that, um, well, we'll get back to them when they, they, our detailed damage assessments are, are completed. Um, uh, a point of, of interest is that the, the CRIF, as it's known by the acronym CRIF, the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility, um, confirmed with the authority just a few days before the passage of the storm that we are in fact covered under a specific tier that we signed up to about five or six weeks ago. Um, so we expect that we would receive some measure of, um, of insurance um, compensation in, in the very near future. And then finally, we, by way of my um, introductory comments, um, <coughs> just to indicate that um, our, our, we'll be making an appeal to our, our members of staff, our colleagues in Nawasa um, to provide uh, a measure of support to our uh, fellow staff members in Caracol and Petit Martinique, and this should be done uh, during the course of today. We'd be sending up, right now, we'd be sending up, I believe, some um, bottled water and so on to our, our and, and foodstuff to our colleagues. Um, I, will, I will hand over now. Um, le let me see. Right, in terms of our, um, the, the, uh, Recommissioned plants that are, are currently um, op operational, as I said, it's about 25% of our production systems that have been recommissioned from, from this morning. And this includes the Annandale, uh, Concord, Mont Plaisir, Bailey's Bacolet, the Bailey's Bacolet borehole, and the Les Avocat water treatment uh, system. So I will hand over now um, to Mr. Ernest Bruno who would go into some further detail um, in terms of the uh, restoration of our water network. And uh, together, uh, we, can, we can answer any questions that, uh, that, that arise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Good afternoon to everyone. Indeed, I must say I am thankful to God that he has spared us the rock of, hur of Hurricane Beryl. I also wish to express my deepest condolence to all the persons who have suffered losses, especially those in Kariku and to let them know that our prayers and we are doing everything that is possible to assist them. In the case of our water supply network, now, firstly, I think I need to let persons know that 90% of our water system are what you describe as surface water. That means that what we have, our dependence is on rain to an extent and we have dams. Now, due to the trough before that passed, before the hurricane itself, what we would have seen was a lot of damages with the excess rain. Now, presently, what we are doing is, a, is our assessment, our damage assessment. As Mr. Smith said, what we have now is, is approximately 25% of our systems up. Actually, we, we, we have about 33 systems, and out of that, maybe just six of them that is up. I am also glad to say that this include, as he said before, the Annadale system. This is the system that supply the, the whole of St. George's to, to an extent, and parts of the south and those areas. Now, in the case of a lot of other areas, we are not so lucky. Presently, they just spoke to me, and they said that Mamakan is down. Mamakan is down because there are damages to lines. We also have places as Mount Plaisy. Mount Plaisy is up and running, and we are working on that now. So overall, our restoration will take some time. I also would really like people to know 
that when we say that the lines or the plants are being open, no, they will not receive water instantly. Because what we have done so far is the assessment we can do is more what you call the exposed lines. Because a great deal of our lines are exposed. So some will pass on bridges. Those that leave the treatment plant, a great deal of them are also exposed. So we will firstly have to go through all of these areas. Many of the areas are impossible, right? We will have to do a lot of cutting of trees because with that amount of rain, we will have received a lot of landslides. And most of our dams, as persons know, are in the mountainous areas. Okay? So, as Mr. Smith said before, once we get the go-ahead on those and we know what is happening, we will recommission. But as, as I was saying before, when you open these systems, people are not expected to receive water immediately. On opening some of the systems, which would have have water from before the hurricane, what will happen? You'll have to do the flushing of the lines. You'll have to do the airing of the lines before water can be received. So, although we are opening, people are not expected to receive water. I would like to reinforce that immediately. So, I'm glad that the Anadia system is open. It's open. We, we have the Mount Places open. The Les Avocats system is open. The boreholes coming from Chairman Valley is open, that supply the area of Mondelez. The one in Bacolet supply the area of La Pastora, which will feed areas Calivini and all those areas. These are open, but people will not receive water immediately. Right. I'd also like to talk about in the areas of the water truck. Now, our water trucks will be out, but we will concentrate primarily on institutions. We also will concentrate on the shelters. Okay, the vulnerable, any way it's vulnerable, vulnerable persons, we would like to do those areas and certain high points where we know water will not reach before three days. This will be our areas of priority. And now, as persons know, we are now out from a drought. We are now in the hurricane season and we have received our first hurricane for the first time so early. So it only show us the need for storage. It also show us the need for management of water. So not because we are in the rain season, we were getting rain and everything was back to normal. Immediately, we are, back, we are not back to normal again because of the hurricane. So I would like to enforce and emphasize on the public the management of water when they receive it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bruno. Uh, we do have a lot of concerns on the live, and I am taking note of some of them. Uh, tell us, what is the timeline for receiving water in the taps? I know you mentioned about opening the dams. So people are concerned about, yeah, we, we want you to clean it and so that we have clean water. But what is that timeline? How does that, what, are, what is that timeline? What does that timeline look like? Well, the timeline will vary from place to place. Okay? Now, if I am, as I always say, I prefer to overstate than to under. By that I mean, like in three days, I can say based on the assessment that is being done and what we know, in, within three days after, once things are good, I can tell people that they will receive water. But I cannot sit here now and say point blank that everybody will receive water next 72 hours. No. Some people, as I say, may be receiving water already. Because all areas, because don't forget, before the hurricane, our aim are always to leave all our sources filled. Okay? So that at least when the hurricane over, we can start to distribute. Once we do the assessment that the lines are intact, we can distribute. However, some of the systems were not filled because during the, before the hurricane, we were trying to ensure that persons have water. So if you were taken more rapidly than people, that, than it was coming in, you don't expect all the systems to remain full. That means you shut it off before people even get water. And we cannot ask people to store water when we are not giving them. Right? So I want to beg that point. So I am saying that between a reasonable time after the assessment is done, we'll be able to say that. But give and take, with, within seven days, all areas should be with water because that's where we are. Uh, people were on the ground from since five this morning 
from since five this morning, there are persons on the ground doing these assessments and starting to work, repairing lines, cutting trees, doing everything. Yeah, did notice a lot of trees. We may not have gotten um, uh, extensive damages in some parts of Grenada, but we did realize that there were a lot of fallen trees on the road. So I know you have to clear that out first um, before you could actually see what's, what's, what damages are done to, um, to the pipes, right? Um, another question for you. Um, is there a water distribution schedule, and when will that start? Okay, yes. We, as I said, from drought to hurricane. So we always have schedule. But we had removed the schedule after the drought and in the beginning of the rain season. So now what we will do, based on the assessment and the systems that are up and running, we will be able to put a schedule in place so as to effectively distribute water to most persons because i always use the word our aim is always to equitably distribute the water that is available all right thank you again mr bruno um two questions two more questions for you we, we were speaking earlier about the town of st george um i know people in the town are, are probably saying that they're on they're in town so they must get water um explain to us what is happening with the the town of st george and which 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 dam is that water system is that water coming from and um windsor forest Pedmutter area i know you talked about some of those areas where dams may have been um I'm blocked. So talk, talk, um, talk to us about those. Okay, the town of St. George is served primarily by the Annadale and the Concord water system. Now, as we said before, in the town of St. George, that was one of the area, I'm talking about the town of St. George, I should say, that's one of the area that the water was never interrupted because we, we continue to allow water to go to the hospital and the areas, but the lines are interconnected, so some of the persons will receive water from that area. Now, some of the high points may not receive water within that area. High points may be as where you might have upper parts in our Lucas Street, Lucas Street, Green Street, and those areas. Now, as I was glad to report, Annadale is now recommissioned and working. So we are now collecting water in the observatory area which supply that area. Concord is also up and running. So these people will start to receive water. But you know, before I continue, I always like to say, I know most of the persons in those areas don't have any storage, mm -hmm. right? And I always say, I don't know if it's sarcastically, it only show me how brilliant our water supply is when you have no storage at all. And I mean, I know we are always on a drive you understand? Stating to persons, store water for at least three days. We come from drought, now we are in hurricane. It's just extremes. So I hope it impress on persons the need to store water. Okay. Um, oh, you spoke about the, the area in Windsor Forest and those Windsor areas. Windsor Forest, Pedmotor, okay, Madagra. Right. Where, where, where right. do they get Right, okay. Well, Madagra is so from, from, the, from the Madagra plant, and that area is good too. So they will start receiving water today. They should have started already. As I say, high points will not receive at the same time. In the area of wind... High points, high points are those on a hill. Right, and those immediately beneath the plant and those areas. Okay. You understand? You, so you, that's where, as you spoke about the valve regulation, mm -hmm. we could look into based on the rate at which it is coming. Because remember, we will still have problems because from the... What you may be getting there now, it might be water that was stored in the tank. Right? Because with the falling trees and all of that, we don't know. It's only when we do an assessment and we start a pump, we'll know if some of these lines are damaged. So we are only dealing with what is in the reservoir, which was stored now. Okay. So, so if, you're, if you're living close to the dam itself, it does not mean necessarily that you're going to get water um, earlier? If you live close to the dam, wouldn't you? But if you live close to the plant, yes, you can get the same time. Because, you know, we have, we have already, we have done these design. To, 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 to do a lot of water to go to the farthest point and then have to come back. It can be done differently, and to a great extent, some of that is being done. So you, you can get water at the same time with other persons because you know, it, it only means that you don't run the line throughout. Right? So yes, they, they will. But as I'm saying, for some points where they are in the middle, they may not get at the same time. Okay. Yeah. And you, you, uh, you, you spoke about the, the areas of Windsor Forest. In the area of Windsor Forest and those areas, these... The water supply there is from the, both PTA Tang and Les Avocat. Both of these systems are up, but the, these are areas which you have to do a great deal of flushing in. 
so they will not receive water one time because we don't just want to give you water. We, we, we fight very hard to give people quality water. You understand? Because people don't just want a consistent supply, but they want a quality supply. And that's our aim. Uh, thank you. Um, could you reiterate um, when the water, water distribution will, will start? As I said, based on the assessment that is being done, once there are no damages, uh, or, or if the damages are minimal and we can repair them within X time, I can assure persons that they water supply. But as to give you a time, you understand? I cannot give you a time to say that Windsor Forest will have water in the next six hours or next one day because it's based on the magnitude of the damage. So the assessment isn't completed yet. Maybe by two o'clock we'll have a better by 2 o'clock, we may have better appreciation of where we're at. No problem. I was referring to specifically water trucks. Oh, the water trucks. Yeah, yeah. Water no. trucks. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, as I said, the water trucks is primarily for the shelters and for institutions and those areas. It's not necessarily to be moving around as when we were in the drought. You understand? Because this is not a matter that there isn't available water. It's just that we have damages. And hence the reason we always ask people to prepare, to prepare, do some storage, so at least we could have a breathing space of at least three days. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bruno. I know, uh, Mr. Smith, you want to add to the conversation? Well, um, <laughs> I just want to reiterate the question of water storage, uh, we, we indicated in our public communication during the, the recent drought that we are, we are going on a, on a cons making a, a concerted effort going forward to uh, advocate for the public the importance of every household investing in a minimum of three days and preferably six or seven days of on-site water storage. Water storage on site at the residential level is a climate change adaptation measure. This is well recognized and it is also well rec recognized as a natural hazard or hurricane mitigation measure. So as is being played out right now, any water system, any, almost any water system anywhere in the world, after a hurricane, you are going to have blocking of dams if it's, if it's uh, primarily surface water, such as in our case, or whatever type of um, um, water source the water utility has. You're going to have damage to the various systems, which could take anywhere from hours to days to possibly weeks to, to repair and restore. In our case, I think it's, um, we, we, we're nowhere close to the damage that was sustained uh, during Hurricane Ivan. Yeah, so we have to be thankful for that. I envisage that in a few days' time, in, in maybe two or maybe three days, um, we should be substantially back um, in terms of our, our, our um, peak um, distribution levels. But we're not sure, we will, we will know definitively um, or much more accurately um, when the, the damage assessment is done. We are, we are, as I said, going to be um, working assiduously at, we are, we are currently um, uh, intervening with our line minister to support our drive for uh, ensuring that every household in Grenada has adequate water storage and uh, coupled with that we're also advocating for uh, rainwater harvesting at the domestic residential level. So we are going to be, as I said, on a concerted, uh, a concerted drive to promote uh, uh, storage at the residential domestic level for every household in Grenada. So if households have three days, four days, five days, a week supply, it means that at times of emergency like we are in now, um, the authority, the utility has a few days to, to bring its systems back up fully operational um, without impacting the, the daily um, um, 
operations of, at the household level. So I'd, I'd, I'd Paul say no on that. And I think that's why water management should also be um, a priority area for um, just educating the people about how we, we manage water, especially in a crisis. Um, just a few reminders. Um, the, cur the current official drop-off point for relief supplies is NADMA, NADMA headquarters in Monjalu. The current official drop-off point for relief supplies, uh, we're talking bottled water, sanitary, um, sanitary products, food items, is um, now NADMA. So please bring it at NADMA headquarters in Labory. Um, question um, for you, Mr. Smith or Mr. Bruno. Um, Karaku and Pichi Martinique, we know that that you mentioned that Mr. Todd Labari, one of the engineers, he's on his way to Karku. He may already be there um, to assess the damages to the desalination plant. What is the plan for Karku and PT Martini currently? Yeah, well, we can only respond to that in a definitive manner after the damage assessment is done. We do not know. We do not know, um, so we can't really make any, any pronouncement. As, as I'd indicated, um, we have a, a, a desalination plant and storage reservoirs in each of Karakou and Petit Martinique. Each of these systems have a, 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 a seawater, there are seawater reverse osmosis uh, treatment plants, and they each have a, a sea, uh, an intake, a seawater intake. Um, it is very, very likely that, that one or both of the intakes could be damaged. All right, so this is a, a pipeline on the, on the sea floor that's anchored. Um, a couple, I don't recall the distance now, but maybe over a thousand feet um, in each case. That is usually the vulnerable uh, component of a, of a seawater reverse osmosis desalination plant. The, the, the buildings um, with the, the, the plants um, in Karakou, it's not in such a vulnerable location. Um, the pump, I know in Pity Martinique, the, the transfer pump is almost at sea level. So if we had four or five or six foot um, surges, storm surges in, in the hurricane, which I, I understand there were, then it's quite possible that we may have lost the pump, right? So we, we don't know, so the, the damage assessment um, there is gonna be critical. Um, let me just say, however, that um, I know it's early days yet, but as I said, we, um, we expect that we'd be receiving um, a significant measure of compensation through the, the CRIF um, catastrophe risk insurance. Within, it's within a, a fairly short period of time. And uh, management, um, following the, the damage assessment, we'd be putting together our priority listing for um, investing in, um, in rehabilitation and recommissioning and so forth of the plants. And it's very, very likely that a, a significant share of this um, would be going to Karakou and Pity Martinique. This is, this is what we, we, um, we expect. But un until we know whether the, the, the seawater intake for each of the plants is damaged, if the transfer pump is damaged, um, then we won't be able to, uh, we won't be able to, um, to, to make any specific pronouncement on that. So uh, we expect that um, when we hear from, again, Engineer Labari may not be, uh, probably won't be able to, to communicate with us um, you know, by phone from, from Karakou or PM. So we may have to wait until he returns to Grenada. We expect sometime later, sometime later today. So we'd be able to make a more, um, a more specific pronouncement on, on, on Karakou and Piti Martinique. We expect by, uh, if not by the end of today, certainly by early uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. So we can safely say once the damages have been assessed, um, um, Karakou and PG Matic should be able to, to get water. Can we say that safely? <laughs> um, well, um, let us not forget that the, the traditional means of, um, of domestic water supply on our sister islands is rainwater harvesting. Now, if we can assume that because we had a fair amount of rain in the trough um, that passed us, and a, a lot of rain fell, and I, I believe Karakou and Pidimatni got rain on Saturday also, before the passage of the hurricane. If we can assume that their cisterns, you know, almost every household in, in Karakou and Pidimatni have some form of storage tank cistern in, in most cases, 
if we can assume that their cisterns were substantially filled, then all households should have a source of water. Now, obviously, if it is correct that most houses have lost their roofs, then they can't harvest rainwater anymore. But they should have, and, and many of these households have weeks of storage. We're talking here in Grenada about minimum of three days, and, and we, we're asking people to go to six days or a week. Um, um, usually in Karakou and, 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 and Piti Martinique, it's, it's weeks or in sometimes months of storage that they have. So in terms of their uh, um, being uh, you know, a, a critical kind of life-threatening shortage of water, we believe that that is very unlikely. What we can speak to in terms of Nawasa's infrastructure is the two desalination plants that uh, provided um, drinking water at the household level in both Karakou and Piti Martinique during the recent drought. When uh, uh, at the household level, we understand most households were out of the traditional um, um, cistern um, storage from, from rainwater because of the, the extreme and protra um, protracted reduction in rainfall. All right, so it's, um, it's a question of how soon can we get our uh, desalination facilities up and running. It would certainly augment the, the, uh, the um, rainwater supplies that most households we expect should have. But there's a, there's a fair amount of uncertainty there. And again, we should know the answer to these questions by, if not later this evening, by, by early tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bruno, you have anything to add at this point? Well, what I want the public to know is that we are all there working and we are sparing no effort to restore water in the shortest possible period. But I also want to enforce again the conservation of water, not because the water is back. Let's go back as though we, were, we are back in the drought. Let's use water that way so we'll have to retain water because we are still in the season. Okay, I do have a recommendation from one of our viewers online about standpipes. Maybe is this a good time to install some standpipes in areas, in difficult areas? Um, at this time, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably playing devil's advocate, but it's a recommendation. Um, so can you, can you comment on that or if, you, if you wish? You are, you are indeed playing devil's advocate because <laughs> standpipes are uh, standpipes. <laughs> Standpipes were installed in our water distribution systems back in the 40s and 50s and 60s when the penetration of water service at the household level was of the order of 40 and 50 and 60 percent. The penetration of water service in, in, in Grenada, in our country, is in the very, very high 90s. There are, there are, that's not to say that there are households who do not have um, internal, uh, what you call a PWS, a private water, uh, private water service. But the vast majority of households in Grenada have a private water service. A standpipe is a facility for people who do not have a private water service to, to catch water, as we say, drog water from the standpipe to your home. Mm -hmm. We live in, in 2024, Grenada is much more developed than standpipe. So standpipe is not an indication of anything other than the lack of economic development of your country. It is also a major waster of water mm -hmm. and contributor to what we call non-revenue water. Mm -hmm. So I thought the, I, for a minute there I was hoping the question was, Will we use the opportunity now to remove all of these standpipes that waste in water? <laughs> so I would say definitely not. We, we're not going to be looking at. No, that is not to say, um, coming out of our recent uh, uh, dry season uh, uh, challenges, one of the responses that management has, is, is, has identified, we didn't get the opportunity to actually implement it before the end of the dry season, but in fact, we spoke about it at our management meeting um, recently. We are going to try to action that. We've we are in the process of identifying five of the most at-risk um, communities. Um, we're focusing on mainland and the mainland initially throughout mainland Grenada as an initial step. 
at which we will be, we'll be, be constructing a tank base and at which we'd be installing, it may be a thousand gallons or two thousand or up to five thousand gallon tanks. The idea is that we would protect them adequately from, you know, a hurricane, you know, flying debris in a hurricane and so forth with a standpipe. So in a sense, yes, but not the traditional standpipe. Right. That would be, you know, it would be managed and, you know, it would be locked and when, uh, when it's yeah, not needed and so on. Yeah. So that at times of drought or at times of emergency, they can serve a village, uh, uh, an area, a cluster of households and so on. But that's not the same, well. yeah, but that's mm -hmm. not the same as the traditional standpipe at the side of the road. Right that we have gotten accustomed to, you know, we pull up our vehicles there and we wash cars and buses mm -hmm. during the week and a weekend or whatever it is and so on. And generally, and I, uh, let me just take the opportunity to just let people know, all standpipes are metered. And this water is paid for by the government of Grenada to Nawasa. So somebody's paying for it. And the government of Grenada is the population of Grenada, the people that pay taxes. So we are paying for, if a standpipe is wasting water, we the population, we are the ones that are paying for that water, right? So I think enough said on that. Um, we, we, we are going to be looking at strategic in installation of um, water storage facilities that can serve a small village or cluster of homes mm -hmm. at uh, 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 um, high risk um, in terms of water supply, high risk areas. And we starting with a, a small number, maybe four or five, and the idea is that we will, we will um, we'll build out on this um, in time for our, our, the next dry season expected, 2025. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Smith, and thank you, Mr. Bruno. This was our update number three from Nawasa. We thank you all for joining us, and we await uh, more updates as we proceed throughout the day. Thank you again. You're tuned into the National Emergency Operations Center of the National Disaster Management Agency, NADMA, bringing you live updates on the impact of Hurricane Beryl, along with NADMA's coordinated national response in collaboration with the Government Information Service and other participating media outlets and platforms. This is the official source for all disaster management information.